It's like a cheerleading spider pyramid. Hi guys, it's Katie from Yarn Society and today we're gonna to be crocheting Charlotte the Spider. She was born when my daughter had a fear of spiders. I made this super cutie to show her that spiders weren't scary and it totally worked. Spiders are now her friends. <laughs> so that's a mom win for me. I'm releasing the spider now because I thought it would be a really cute Halloween idea as well. And I'm gonna post a picture up here that will show you how you can make her more Halloween-y. So we're gonna go through supplies and then we'll get started making Charlotte the Spider. For supplies, I used a chainette yarn by Lion Brand, and I really like this yarn for this pattern, but you don't have to use it. It's just a really soft, nice yarn, but you can use any type of worsted. And then I have a D 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. You can also use a C, a E. It really doesn't matter. Use what you have at home. If you don't have a D, use an E. It's not a big deal. I'll also have a yarn needle, some scissors. I grab a few stitch markers. And then for her eyes, we just embroidered on with some black thread and a needle and then grab some stuffing because we will need that as well. I also like to use pins for assembly and this is actually my pin cushion. <laughs> so if you um, are looking for a pin cushion, this is a great pattern uh, to make for that. So one more thing that this is totally optional is for the legs. If you want a fluffier look, I grabbed this brush. I believe it's a cat brush. It's called Magic Coat. You can get them on Amazon. I'll link one down below and you can just brush out the legs and we will do that later on in the video. Okay, we're gonna get started with the pattern. So I have my D hook, my yarn, and I have a stitch marker. For round one, we are gonna start by making four single crochet into a magic circle. Feel free to do a magic circle however you'd like. For today, I'm gonna make a slip knot and then we're gonna do a chain. So I'm gonna wrap the yarn around two fingers. I'm gonna hold it with my ring finger. I'm gonna push that back piece to the front and then pull up on that piece. This will make my loop. I have a tail here where I can adjust my loop. I'm gonna insert my hook and then tighten it around my hook. I'm gonna get set up with my yarn and chain two. So yarn over and pull through, that's chain one. Yarn over and pull through, chain two. We are gonna make four single crochet into that second chain from the hook and it's this one here. Place your hook underneath that top chain and we are gonna make a single crochet. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through. And I have a video on a single crochet if you need that in the description box below. Go through the same loop once again and make a second single crochet. Go through the same stitch and make your third single crochet and then go in there one more time and make a single crochet. Now we have four single crochets I'm just gonna tighten this up and then I'm gonna fan out my stitches a little bit. When we work with smaller stitches, things kind of tend to close in on us a little bit. We're gonna count our stitches here. We have our first V stitch, our second, our third, and our fourth. And then because we made a slip knot, we have this little bit of yarn here that we're just gonna pass right over. I'm gonna mark my stitch with a stitch marker. I like to mark my last stitch of the round, but if you like to mark your first stitch, do what you're comfortable with. For round two, we're gonna go into that first stitch right here. We are going to make one single crochet into this stitch. Then we're gonna move over to the next stitch and we're gonna make a three single crochet into that stitch. So here is single crochet one, two, and three. Then we're gonna move over a stitch and make one single crochet. And then we'll move over to our last stitch and we're gonna make three single crochet into that stitch. Two, and three. From here, I'm gonna change my stitch marker and then I'm just gonna tighten up my magic circle. At the end of round two, you'll have eight stitches, so go ahead and count that. For round three, we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna make one single crochet into that first stitch. 
and then we're gonna make three single crochet into the next and we're just gonna repeat that pattern. So here is one single crochet, move over and make three single crochet into that stitch. We have one, two, and three. Move over, make one single crochet. In the next stitch, you'll make three single crochet. This is one, two, and three. Move over for one single crochet. Move over to place three single crochet. Here is one, two, and three. Move over for one single crochet and then place three single crochet into your last stitch. We're going to change our stitch marker. At the end of round three, you'll have 16 stitches. Go ahead and tighten up that magic circle for the last time. For round four, we are going to make a single crochet in the first two stitches and then we're gonna put three single crochets into this corner stitch. We're trying to make a square shape. So we have single crochet one in the first stitch, move over and make your second single crochet. Now make three single crochets into your next stitch. Here is one, two, and three. And now we're gonna make a single crochet in the next three stitches. Here is single crochet one, Move over, two, move over for your third single crochet. Now we're gonna make three single crochet into that corner stitch. And now we're gonna make a single crochet into the next three stitches. So here is one, move over, two, and then three. Make three single crochet into that corner stitch. And then we'll make a single crochet in the next three stitches. Make three single crochet into your corner stitch. And then we're gonna end with one single crochet. Change your stitch marker. At the end of this round, you'll have 24 stitches. For round five, we're gonna single crochet in the next three stitches, and then we'll put three in our corner stitch. Here is single crochet one, single crochet two, and single crochet three, and then we'll put three in our corner stitch. Then we're gonna make a single crochet in the next five stitches. Here is one, two, three, four, and five, and then we'll make three in our corner stitch. Make a single crochet in the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and then we'll make three in that corner. Make a single crochet in your next five stitches. and five, and then we'll end here with three single crochet into your corner stitch, and then we'll make a single crochet in the next two. So here is single crochet one, back to the same stitch, two, and three. And then we're gonna make a single crochet in the next two stitches. You can change your stitch marker. At the end of round five, we'll have 32 stitches. I'm just gonna show you here how to count your rounds, just in case you are starting out. And here we have our really nice boxy shape going. Here is round one, two, three, 
four, five, and now we'll be starting on round six. For round six, we're gonna make a single crochet into the next four stitches. Two, three, and four, and then you can make three single crochet into our corner stitch. Make a single crochet into the next seven stitches. Here is single crochet one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then we're gonna make three single crochet into our corner stitch. Single crochet into the next seven stitches. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Place three single crochet into that corner stitch. One, two, and three. Make a single crochet in the next seven stitches. Here's single crochet one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Make three single crochet into that corner stitch. And then we're gonna end with a single crochet in the next three stitches. From here, we're gonna change our stitch marker. We'll have 40 stitches. Definitely make sure you count to make sure you have 40 at this point. Moving on to round seven, we are gonna single crochet into the back loop only. So here's the both loops. This one is the front loop, the one towards us. And we're gonna be going underneath the back loop, the one away from us. So insert your hook and continue to single crochet all the way around for 40 stitches. Thank you guys for joining me on this crochet along. I am in love with this spider. I am not in love with attaching all her feet, but I am in love with the way she turned out. She's one of my favorites, and I know I say that a lot, but she really, really is one of my favorites. I know I showed a picture of the Halloween version that I did, and I just wanna pop it up here again for you to see. This is made in a wee crochet comfy worsted yarn so don't worry if you don't have this fluffy chainette yarn this is how it looks with the worsted weight yarn and it brushed out just fine i just brushed out the feet a little bit i didn't make it as fluffy as i did in the original one so just know you can use any kind of yarn if you want to use an acrylic yarn that's fine too she actually she looks cute in in anything so keep single crocheting all the way around Speaking of Halloween, I just made a ton of Halloween candy bags for the kids. Last year I didn't do anything because of the pandemic. I didn't know what to do. And this year I decided, because last year everybody was doing bags, and I thought it was genius. I was a little late to that party. So this year I made a ton of bags with some fun stuff in it besides candy to kind of make up for last year. So you have to let me know what you're doing in the comments below. Okay, so we're reaching our last stitch here. Okay, when we're done, we're gonna change our stitch marker and we are going to have 40 stitches still. From round eight through 15, we're just gonna be single crocheting under both loops. So here, we're just gonna continue to single crochet from round eight through 15. And I'm gonna show you a little trick that I like to use for counting rounds when we do so many in a row. I do about four single crochet and then I grab another stitch marker and I place it on my stitch horizontally so I know that I'm marking my round eight. Then I'm gonna to continue to crochet all the way around 
then I'll show you how it looks when we reach the end of this round. Okay, I'm reaching the end of round eight. I'm gonna finish it up here. I'm going into the stitch with my stitch marker. I'm gonna change my stitch marker. I still have 40 stitches. And now I'm gonna continue with round nine. It's okay if things start flipping in on you, just make sure you flip it back out. For round nine, continue to single crochet. I'm gonna show you here, I'm gonna do a few stitches. And this stitch marker on the, on the round just really helps to not have to go back to the beginning to count. So here we know that this is round eight, the one that we marked. And then we're starting round nine, and then we just continue to go up. So we have eight, nine, continue to crochet 10, 11 through 15. And then we'll meet back at the end of round 15. Make sure that you have 40 stitches for each round, and then we will meet back. I am reaching my last few stitches of round 15, so I'm just gonna finish up here. We are gonna change our stitch marker and we're still gonna have 40 stitches. Starting round 16, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna do an invisible decrease. I will link my video down below and I go really slow in that video, so feel free to watch that first. But we're gonna make a decrease and then we're gonna single crochet in the next three stitches and we're gonna repeat that all the way around. So I'm gonna go under the front loop of my first stitch, under the front loop of my second. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through. I'll have two loops on the hook and then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through. And that is my first decrease. I'm gonna single crochet in the next three stitches. Here's one, two, and three. And then I'm gonna make my second decrease. I'm gonna single crochet in the next three stitches. Here's one, two, and three. And then we have our third decrease. We're gonna single crochet in the next three. One, two, and three. Then we have our fourth decrease. Single crochet in the next three. One, two, and three. Here is our fifth decrease. We're doing eight total. Single crochet in the next three. One, two, three. Here's our sixth decrease. Single crochet in the next three. Here is our seventh decrease and then we'll single crochet in the next three. Here is our eighth and final decrease, and then we'll single crochet in the last three. At the end of round 16, you can change your stitch marker. We're gonna have 32 stitches we're gonna take a little break here and embroider on the eyes. So leave a good amount of working yarn and then put a stitch marker on there just so we don't lose our spot. On to embroidering the eyes. Go ahead and grab a long piece of embroidery floss. I'm just using black and then make a few knots on the end. We're gonna place a pin between round 12 and 13, and I know that right after this ridge is round seven. So we're gonna count round seven, round eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So I'm gonna place a pin between round 12 and 13. I'm gonna grab another pin and just make sure that I'm pretty centered here. And it looks pretty good. I'm just gonna kind of scooch it over a little bit. Now I'm gonna count four stitches over. This is second my third, and then my fourth. I'm gonna place my pin into that fourth stitch. This is where I'm gonna start my embroidery on my eye and I'm gonna move in towards the other pin. So these pins can get a little crazy because <laughs> I've 
hurt myself quite a few times. So take out this middle one and then flip your piece inside out. We want to make a knot on the inside of the head to secure this embroidery floss. So grab a piece of yarn on the inside of the head and pull it all the way through until you're not. Go through a different piece of the same piece. It doesn't really matter. Pull it all the way through until you have a loop on the end. You want to go behind this loop and you just want to make a knot. Feel free to make another one just to make sure that you are very secure, but for video's sake, I'm just going to do one. I'm going to go up through that stitch, the one that I have pinned. So I'm going to find that stitch with my needle. I'm going to pull it all the way through. I'm going to move up one round and then over one stitch and place my needle from front to back. Go ahead and pull that all the way through. Now I'm going to skip a stitch and I'm going to go into the next stitch over from inside the head coming out. So pull that through and then you're going to go right back through that same stitch on top. and pull that all the way through. Your first eye is now done. I do like to add eyelashes, but if you don't, you can just skip over that part, but I will show you how I add a few. I go up through that corner stitch, the same one that we already made. I pull it all the way through, and then I just go up around and just kind of find a spot in the middle. Embroidery is not my forte, so, um, if you know a better way, feel free. We're gonna go back up through that corner stitch again and I'm just gonna move up a little bit just to make one more little eyelash. Our eyelashes are done and we're gonna move on to the next eye. Now we wanna grab another pin and we are gonna count and place that pin in the sixth stitch over. Once you have that pin in there, we are gonna place our needle up through that stitch so that we can start our second eye. We're gonna go up around and over one stitch and then place your needle through that stitch and go down into the head. Now we wanna leave one stitch open next to the eye and then we'll go inside the head out through that stitch. Go up through your same stitch you already made and pull that all the way through. To add an eyelash, go back through the corner stitch. And then you can go up around and over a bit. And then you can go back up through the same stitch and make your second eyelash. Okay, from here it looks pretty good. I want to secure this yarn, so go ahead and flip your head inside out again and then grab a piece of yarn on the inside. Pull your needle all the way through, leave a loop at the end, and then go behind your loop to secure a knot. I'm just going to do this one more time to make a knot. Once you're finished, you can just cut off this little piece and leave it inside. We're going to start on round 17, so take out that extra stitch marker and then go ahead and get set up. For round 17, we're going to make one decrease, single crochet in the next two stitches and we'll repeat this eight times around. So here is decrease one, single crochet in the next two stitches, decrease two, single crochet in the next two. Here is another decrease. Single crochet in the next two. And I'm gonna let you guys count from here, making one decrease and single crocheting in the next two.
Here's our last decrease, ending with two single crochet. Change your stitch marker. At the end of this round, you'll have 24 stitches. We're gonna take a quick pause to stuff our heads, so grab your other stitch marker again and secure your working yarn, and then grab a handful of your stuffing. Begin to stuff your head, but don't stuff too much because we still need to crochet a few more rounds. We're gonna add a little as we go. I like to make a hole in my stuffing we also want to make sure that we keep the head flat. We don't want to round it out too much unless you like that look. If you like that look, go ahead. I have this funny bit of yarn here, so it kind of looks like a little beauty mark or something. When you're happy with your stuffing, we're going to take out our stitch marker and move on to round 18. Round 18, we're going to make a decrease and then one single crochet. We're going to repeat that pattern all the way around. Here is our decrease and then a single crochet and then make a decrease and a single crochet all the way around. Once you add your stuffing, things get a little bit harder to hold, so just take your time and go slow at this point. Here's a decrease and then a single crochet and I'm going to let you guys count until the end of the row. Reaching the end of this round, we will have 16 stitches. I'm gonna secure this. Again, I'm gonna add just a little bit more stuffing into this middle piece here that I have, this middle hole. I feel like when you make the hole, it avoids the lumps. I'm not 100% sure on this, but I don't really have lumpy amigurumi, so I think it works. I know some people take small bits and add that as they go, but that just never worked well for me. So burrowing my little hole in the middle just kind of really helps keep things smooth. We're not gonna add any more stuffing after this round, so make sure that you're happy with how much stuffing you have in your spider. Once you're happy with your stuffing, we're gonna get set up again. And for round 19, it's our last round, we're gonna make decreases all the way around. So we're gonna have eight decreases total. So here's a decrease and another one, and so we're just gonna do that all the way around. Here is decrease one. Decrease two, and then continue to decrease all the way around. Making our last decrease here, we are done. So we want to leave a long tail to fasten off and then we want to close up this little hole we have. So leave a long tail. Cut that piece and then we're going to fasten off. Yarn over and pull your yarn all the way through. Give that a little tug at the end. Weave in your yarn needle and then we're going to close up this piece here. We're gonna count, here is our fastened off bit. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Our eighth stitch is right here. We're gonna place our yarn needle behind that front loop. And then we're gonna pull our needle all the way through towards us. Turn your work as you go, go behind the front loop and pull that through. This is stitch two. Go behind for stitch three. Here's stitch four, five, six, 
seven and eight. Now we are going to close up this hole, but keep an eye right in the middle because we need to insert our needle back through there. So close it up and I see my hole here. I'm just gonna tighten this up a little bit more and then I'm gonna place my needle right through that hole. You can see that if you place your needle somewhere in that vicinity, it will start to open up a little bit. Now weave your yarn through and give it a tug and then you kind of want to smooth it back out. And that's a nice finish on your amigurumi piece. Weave your yarn tail in really well and then just cut off the excess yarn. And her head slash body, because she's a spider, is done. We're gonna move on to the legs next. We're gonna get started on the legs. So I am gonna make four single crochet into a magic circle. So I'm gonna make my slip knot again. I'm gonna go a little bit quicker this time. I'm gonna chain two. And then I'm gonna make four single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And feel free to make a magic circle whichever way is your most favorite. I'm gonna close up my hole and then I'm going to fan out my stitches a little bit and grab a stitch marker. For round two, we're gonna increase in each stitch around. So here I have four stitches Here's two, three, four. I'm gonna skip that little bit there from the slip knot. And then we're gonna make two single crochets into that same stitch. That's what an increase is. Here is our first one. Going back to the same stitch, here's our second one. Then we're gonna to move to the next stitch and we're gonna make two single crochet into that stitch. Then we're gonna move over and make an increase in the next stitch to single crochet, and then move over to your last stitch and you'll make two single crochet into that stitch as well. Tighten up that magic circle, change your stitch marker, and the end of this round you'll have eight stitches. For round three and round four, we're just gonna single crochet in the next eight stitches all the way around. So just go underneath both loops and single crochet. This one is considered the short legs and we will crochet two of these and then I will talk you through how we crochet the medium legs and the long legs. Okay, from here my work's turning in on itself because we're using such small stitches. So make sure to turn it back out so the right way is facing you. Go ahead and change your stitch marker. You're still gonna have eight stitches. For round four, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna single crochet all the way around. I'm gonna change my stitch marker at the end of round four. We'll still have eight stitches. For round five, we are gonna make a single crochet in the next two stitches. Then we're gonna make a decrease, and then we're gonna continue with some single crochet. So in the first stitch, make a single crochet, move over, make a single crochet, and then we're gonna make two decreases. So make your first decrease, then make your second, and then single crochet in each of the next two stitches. Okay, this little bit of yarn is gonna get in my way, so I'm just gonna take a second and shove that guy in there. A sharp pair of scissors, the end of them are really helpful when you're trying to do something like this. Okay, so now we're gonna have six stitches. Change your stitch marker. For round six and round seven, we are going to single crochet in the next six stitches. And then that's 
essentially our leg that will be it so we're gonna work on round six here going all the way around single crochet in the next six stitches And then from here we can change our stitch marker and this is our last round we're going to single crochet in the next six stitches these smaller stitches get a little bit tougher to crochet in but just take your time and go slow so here i am making my last stitch I'm going to leave a really long tail for assembly. I'm going to get set up again. I'm going to yarn over and pull my yarn all the way through. When we fasten off, we have this little edge right here um, in our work. So what I like to do is grab my yarn needle and we are just going to make a small adjustment. I do like to sew my pieces shut, but you do not have to do that if you don't like to. So here I'm just going to go into my next stitch for my fasten off, and from inside out I'm just going to pull that piece in. Okay, for our legs we do this decrease on round 5, and it's very subtle so if you don't see it it's really not a big deal, but we will be having that decrease on the bottom. So his feet kind of look like they have this little indentation. And if you can't see it, again, do not worry about it. But I just wanted to point that out for assembly. Here, I just like to close my pieces shut. So I'm just going to go under like a stitch or probably two on this leg. And I just like to go back and forth. And that just make things a little bit easier for me when I assemble. And so that's it. That's one of the small legs. You're going to stop the video and make one more small leg. I should say short leg. <laughs> So this is the shorty this is only up to round seven i'm not going to do a section for the medium and the long legs because they are the same exact pattern the only difference is the medium legs that you'll make two of go a single crochet from round six through nine so you're adding two more rounds of single crochet so you'll follow the same exact pattern but from round six through nine, you're just gonna single crochet all the way around. Then for the long legs, you're gonna make four of these. You're gonna add on a few more single crochet rounds. So from round six through 11, you're gonna single crochet. The long legs have six rounds of single crochet. The medium legs only have four, and then the small have two. And I do have the written pattern, so it might be a little bit easier to just jump on over there and take a peek at it if you need to jot these down or just take a screenshot of how many rounds for each leg. If you're liking that fuzzy leg look like I do, grab your super handy cat brush. <laughs> I don't have a cat, but I have a cat brush. And you're gonna do these quick motions just to grab that yarn and fluff it out. You do want to be careful when you're working around the magic circle because you can pull that bit of yarn. I've done it before and it stinks because you can't really get that middle piece back in. So just be very quick and light and try not to get the bottom of that piece. You can brush for quite a while if you want it really fluffy or if you just want a little bit of fuzz, just do a few quick motions. We're going to get ready for assembly, so we're gonna get really comfortable with attaching pieces here. We have quite a few legs to attach. I like to start out with my short leg first. In my pattern, it says to insert a needle between round 14 and 15 of the body, but let's just see whatever looks good to us. You can do any round that you'd like. That's just kind of a guideline that I like to give. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a pin because that's super helpful for me. I'm just gonna count and kind of see what my leg looks like there. I definitely recommend pinning your pieces in place before you attach them because it's really helpful to see how it's going to look before you do all that hard work. And also remember you have that tiny divot in your foot and if you can keep that on the bottom that would be great and if not it's really not a big deal. Okay, I kind of like my foot right here and I like to keep the end of my foot near the corner of my eye. So I'm gonna grab my yarn needle 
and get this going. Weave your yarn into your yarn needle and then I'm not very elegant when I do this on video so I'm going to try my best to have you see what I'm doing. Since I have my short leg pinned on this round, I'm just going to move down around for attaching. I'm going to go up through a stitch of the body I'm going to pull that all the way through and then I'm going to go down a stitch of the leg. So I'm going to go right through here. Then I'm going to go through another stitch up through the body. You know, I'm just going to take this pin out. It's kind of not helping. Okay, we're going to go up through a stitch of the body and then I go down through a stitch of the leg. So there's really only two or three stitches for me to go through. I'm going to go through two stitches of the leg. I'm going to pull that all the way through. So I don't like when my legs have these little bits that are sticking out. So what I'm going to do is go up through the body once again. I'm actually going to end up going right through that same stitch. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab this little corner bit here. It's not actually a stitch, it's like a side stitch. And I'm going to pull that all the way through. If you don't mind your feet hanging a little, then just leave it at two stitches. But I like to attach that little side bit to keep it in place. Now I personally like to make a knot for my pieces, but you don't have to do this. You can just weave your yarn right through. But to show you guys, I like to go up through a stitch right next to my leg. I like to make a loop and then go behind my loop. You know this, we've done this a lot. And then like seesaw this knot shut so you can get the knot as close to your leg as possible. And then I just weave in my yarn. So once you weave that in, you can go ahead and snip that off and then there it is. There's your first leg. So now we're going to grab a medium leg and you kind of want that little divot on the bottom. And I'm just going to line this up right next to my other leg. I'm going to get my yarn needle ready. And we are going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to go one row down from where I have it. I'm going to go up through the body. And then I'm going to go down through the leg, going through one stitch. Then we'll go up through the body, just moving over a little bit. And then down through the leg. Kind of get a little caught up right there, but just find your stitch. I'm going to move over and go up through the body one more time. And then I'm going to grab this corner bit here because I want to keep my leg attached pretty close. And then I'm going to attempt to just make my knot as we go. You can also do it this way where you make that loop on your last go around and then you tighten it and weave it in. It takes one step out of going all the way through and then making your knot, so you can also do it that way. Okay, so that one is attached. I'm going to weave my yarn all the way through. And then I'm going to grab my long leg. Moving on to my long leg, we're going to attach two more legs and they're both going to be long. I'm going to find my divot and I think it's here. Sometimes it's a little hard to tell which side has that little decrease. Sorry, I'm a little off camera here, but all I'm going to do is line it up right next to my other foot, get my yarn needle all set up, and then I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to go through a stitch of the body or the head, whatever you want to call it, and then I'm going to go down through the leg. Don't worry if one side looks different than the other. My spiders look different all the time. I think on this one it ended up kind of having one funny leg, but it gives it character and I love that about Amigurumi. 
So don't try to be a perfectionist. I mean, you can be if you want to be. I'm pretty much a perfectionist and I have had to throw that out the window with crochet because I just feel like it's inevitable that things aren't going to be exactly the same. And that's okay. And that's what makes it super cute. Okay, I'm going into that little corner stitch. I'm going to try to make my knot on that last stitch just to avoid one more step. And once again, if you don't want to make that knot, don't worry about it. Just weave your yarn in really, really well. Cut off that piece and then we're going to grab one more long leg. We're going to do the same exact thing on this leg. And because where this leg ends up on the body, it kind of juts out a little bit. Um, that's totally fine. So I'm going to grab my head stitch here and just pull this up. Go down through a stitch of the leg and then up through a stitch of the body. At this point, you're like a pro at assembly, so I'm not even worried about you. <laughs> and I hope you're not swearing at me yet either. If there's a way that I can find without attaching anything in crochet, I would totally do it. And I know there's a book like that, and I have tried to make a pattern like that, and I found it so difficult that I just said, okay, forget it, I'll just attach my pieces. Okay, so here I didn't make that knot. I'm going to pull this tight and then I'm going to go ahead and grab just a little bit of yarn here to make that knot. Weave in your yarn. And then give that a little snip. I have all faith in your assembly gifts and abilities, so I'm gonna fast forward the other side. You can still get an idea of what I'm doing, but it'll be going a little bit quicker. You can see my back leg sticks out a little bit more. I could have probably attached my front leg a little bit closer to my eye, but you know what, it's okay.
yay, we're done, you guys. Did you survive your assembly? Sometimes it's tough. Those feet don't always go on as we expect. So here is our finished spider without the bow and then here is the one with the bow and she is the one that has her feet brushed out a little so you can see the difference. You can see what you like and what you don't like. If you'd like to make this bow, I do have a separate video on that so I will link that down below. And here are our cute little friends. If you want to add on a pin cushion like me, go ahead and make one of those and let me know who you're gifting this to, if you're making a pin cushion, if you're making one for yourself. Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys for joining me on this crochet along. I appreciate it. If you'd like to see more crochet alongs, please subscribe to my channel where I have those and tutorials coming up weekly. And please head over to yarnsociety.com for free crochet patterns.